Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the GP Pro for your GoPro camera. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing, show you what's inside, and then I'm gonna walk you through the modes and kind of how everything works. First off, you're gonna have your instructions. These are really, really well written, easy to follow. So you've got your warranty card as well. And we've got a nice little case here with all of your goodies in it. So charger, USB cord. There's a couple lights here on the bottom of the charger. When these lights are red, that means that they're charging. When they turn blue or green, then that means that your batteries are fully charged and ready to use. Got a couple batteries here. Let's get to the meat and potatoes here. We got this guy and we've got your tube extension. So you're gonna have a little cap on the end of this. Make sure that that's nice and snug. And then you've got a couple wires and these are for charging your GoPro while you're using it so your GoPro doesn't die. Batteries don't last too long in there. So if you're using the monitor backpack, you're gonna wanna use the wire that's got three wires, not the one that has four. We're gonna go ahead and use the three and I'll get you going here. So just like a flashlight, you just put your batteries in here. Obviously that one's not gonna fit very well and that's what this is for. So we'll screw this on. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is nice and tight. One of the biggest mistakes that people are making is that they are screwing these on but just not getting them tight enough and then when they power it on, nothing happens. Usually it's just this cap needs to be tightened up a little bit. So um, on the gimbal itself, if you look at where the camera goes and you flip this thing over right here on the inside of this motor, there's a little tiny white plug. And that little plug goes with this little plug here. So we'll plug that guy in right here. Now we can put our GoPro on. So the GoPro, super easy. You never really even have to unscrew these screws all the way. You can back them out if you have a backpack on them, they're long enough and the GoPro will just slide right on into that little gap right there. And then we can take the, the thumb screws and just tighten those hand tight. Now we did change this design. So in the manual, it's gonna say that you're gonna have two of these little guys. You don't need those anymore. We, we simplified the, the design. You used to have, a, have to have a different one for the backpack and now you don't have to. We made the screws long enough that actually it works really well with both. So we'll go ahead and plug this guy into the side of the GoPro, just like that. So it goes right there. And the plug kind of wraps around, goes underneath the camera right there like that. And then now we're getting some power from here to the GoPro. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to turn it on. So you have your power button is this gold button right on the side here. So there's gonna be a little LED light right here that's gonna flash. So you just wanna set this on a flat, non-moving surface when you turn it on, because it's gonna calibrate right there. So we'll go ahead and hit that power button. You'll see a quick sequence of lights, just like that. It's already calibrated. So we're all done, ready to use it. So you can see right now that it's not doing anything and it's not actually working like the gimbal should. So the joystick is also a button. So if you push in on it, it's gonna click and you'll hear it. So you wanna push in on it and hold it for two to three seconds and you'll see the motors will actually turn on and activate. So one, two, so now it's working. We've got full stabilization. So it's gonna default right off the bat to the heading follow mode. And what that is is you can pan left and right, and then as you tip the gimbal forward, it's gonna keep the horizon flat. If you wanted to lock the position of the camera so it's always facing this direction, you just click that button one time. And now you can see as I'm turning my hand, it's not following, it's pointing that direction. It's gonna stay that way until you click that button one more time. So I've clicked it again. Now you can see as I'm turning, it's turning and following my move. And that is called the heading lock mode when you do that. So um, if you were doing like a really long shot and you knew exactly where you were gonna end up and you just wanted to walk straight into something, it, it does help to eliminate a lot of movement that would be unnecessary. So it is kind of a cool way to get a really smooth shot. The next mode is gonna be the 
heading pan follow mode. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna click the button twice. And now you can see that as I'm tipping the camera or tipping the handle, it tips the camera. And so it's moving this way, it's following that way, and it's following this way now. So if I wanted to, with this mode, I can go ahead and slowly tip it around and I can go into the inverted upside down mode. So uh, while I'm in this mode, it's kind of cool because I can actually hit that button one more time and go back into the same functions. So now it's not gonna follow anymore. It's gonna be in the same thing as mode one, but we're upside down. So you can see it's feathering my moves and it's keeping the camera pointing the same way on the horizon. So I click it one more time back into two. Now you can see as I'm moving the can or the gimbal, the camera is following that move. And this is really cool. If you don't want to use the joystick and you're following somebody down some stairs or something, you can just do this. And it's sometimes easier for people and some people like to use the joystick. So let me go over the joystick really fast. In mode one, you can see as I move it up and down, it's moving the camera up and down. So, and it's nice because you let go, it'll feather your move out for you. It's actually really, really smooth. So in, in mode two, it's gonna move the camera left and right. So we'll get it back pretty centered right there. And then we'll go back into mode one and then Again, you can see it's gonna move it up and down when you do the joystick. So let's say that you are gonna be in an airplane or on a boat or something and you can't calibrate it because it's gonna be moving. So instead of turning the power off here, if you just push that button in and hold it on the joystick, you can see in my motors will just go inactive. So you hold it for about three to four seconds and then they just kind of turn off but you can see that it's still on. I have that blue flashing light telling me that I've got a full charge on my batteries. And it's gonna remember the calibration. So you can just leave it like this. It's t drawing very, very little power. And then when you get to wherever you are, whether you're in a car, a boat, or a plane, or whatever that you are using it in, you, it, you still have that calibration. And whenever you fire the motors back up, there you go. It's good to go. And it's gonna be calibrated just like it was when you first did it. So another thing that I wanted to show you real quick is when you are using this and you, uh, you're walking or doing whatever, as you're moving, you get a lot of this kind of motion. No matter how smooth you think you're moving, it, just a little bit of that motion will show up. One of the things that we do have on our website are these carbon fiber extension poles. And these things are super cool, especially if you're doing a lot of walking, moving, you can easily get like almost a beautiful crane shot. They'll just, as you kind of move it up and down, you get a lot of extension. So these are really nice to have. The carbon fiber tubes are super light. And also when you're walking with this, it tends to take up a lot of that bounce. It's almost like a shock absorber. So as you're walking, you don't see nearly as much movement. You can see my body moving and you can see my hand moving, but because the camera has a little bit of weight to it, it almost just takes up all of the, the bounce that would be in there. So these are a really, really nice tool. Um, like I said, you, you get a couple sets of these and you can actually get some pretty good distance on it. And you can get what looks to be like a 10 foot crane move, which is really cool, or get out over the top of something or whatever it is that you're shooting for. So this is a really cool accessory. Um, we are coming out with cases, so you look for those on our website. So another really cool thing besides these poles that we have is this remote. So when you do have this extended out, you're still able to operate all the functions. So you have your up and down and your mode button all right here. So this is really simple. It plugs into the side right here. If you do have like a really long extension, you're still able to operate your pan and tilt and all the functions. So I can switch it into mode two here if I wanted to. Go back into mode one. So super easy. 
really cool thing to have especially if you've got a few of these extension poles it's nice and long it's about six feet so you can really get some distance with that too so thanks for watching and i hope you guys really enjoy your gimbals